many great opportunities, but it comes with some real risks. And we must address these or it will continue to have a very harmful and corrosive impact on our society, on our community. Our government has been taking action on this. We've been standing up and stepping up when it comes to the actions of the future. Lauren Rose Warren is an associate professor at the School of Social and Political Sciences at the University of Melbourne. So I want to know what your take is on this, because you can almost imagine hearing the cheers virtually of everybody out there online who's been targeted by lies, thinking that finally now is a time when some of these trolls can be held accountable. Theoretically, the idea of saying that we're going to crack down on trolls sounds like a good idea. I mean, everybody has already, uh, if you've spent any time at all online, you realise there's a bit of a problem. <laughs> the idea, though, of hinging this to defamation, most people's experiences of being trolled online, particularly if you're a woman, a marginalised group, etc., you're not experiencing defamation. You're experiencing other kinds of harassment that doesn't quite fit that legislation. So it seems to me quite strange that the government has hinged this legislation to a thing that concerns politicians, which is supposedly uh. lies being told about them, as opposed to actually what users experience, which is not, def you know, most users, I'm saying the ordinary user, isn't experiencing defamation. But defamation is understood in a legal sense, in a way that trolling isn't quite. Yeah, I mean, I think that's a great point. However, there has to be a sort of benchmark and defama defamation being a crime, it makes sense that they would start there. But what does this really change? Because let's say now without this law in Australia, if somebody is defamed online by some anonymous, say, Twitter account, does that victim have any recourse really? Could they through legal means, try to find out now who the source of that bad information is. Yes, yeah, so this is really what this is designed to do, is to unmask the perpetrators. The problem is, is that as proposed, at least from my understanding, there's a lot of flaws in how this information is going to be collected. So seemingly, again, from what I understand, every user from every one of these platforms is going to have to submit data that uh, identifies us. Yeah. Now, who is going to be verifying all of this data? If you think about the Twitter verification process in order to get that blue tick that everybody wants, <laughs> it's almost impossible to get yourself verified. So you're going to have to have this labour-intensive process where the documents are going to have to be verified. Now, that is never going to happen. What will, what will happen is the data's collected. It won't be checked until there's a, um, a request, if you like, from law enforcement for that piece of data. It's only then that you're going to find out that that troll didn't actually submit accurate data but just submitted a scan oh. of a fake passport and that's where for me for example I think that there is a shallowness about this policy in terms of if you're going to use the internet to do bad things why would I give up actual data that's incriminating about my own identity it seems strange I also think it raises some issues about whether for example users actually trust Facebook to give them our personal data in that respect of course we're giving data to these companies all the time, but actually, you know, scans of our name, our birth names and addresses, when Facebook has already demonstrated they're not the best guardians of our data. Yeah, for sure. I mean, you raise great points about the kind of loopholes or flaws in the structuring of a law and technically how it would even get that information. But do you not think it is time for people who spread lies through anonymous social media accounts to finally face some kind of accountability in some way? Yeah, I agree. Yes. <laughs> I think we're on the same page in terms of people doing bad stuff online uh, have been able to benefit from the cloak of anonymity for a really long time and that it would be great if we would be, uh, if, if law could catch up with them. The problem is, as, a, as I've mentioned, I don't think most users who aren't high profile individuals are going to say that defamation is actually what hurts them online. So I think that the defamation aspect is something that disproportionately impacts people who are already 
maybe empower and have other channels of recourse, as opposed to the ordinary user of social media, who is quite possibly experiencing trolling, but doesn't actually fit the benefit, the, the label of defamation. And I don't think those people get addressed through this, through this proposed legislation. Right. And it is kind of a constant game of cat and mouse and this constant tension between privacy and safety. But I think you spelled out some of the issues there very well for us, Lauren. So thanks for joining us. Thank you very much for having me.